You know what? Every year out there, there's a trade show for, you pick the industry, there's a trade show for it. It doesn't matter. SHOT Show is one that I really interested in. I don't pay much attention to it, never been to it, but it seems like, uh, you know, every year it's, uh, you know, something is a new color, a new texture, a little bit different configuration, uh, maybe a new caliber, but um, it doesn't seem like there's anything really innovative, something that's really different every year. But this year, this is the standard manufacturing S333. This one is a revolver like you've never seen before. Let's open this box up, check it out. All right, here it is, the Thunderstruck S333. Open the box up, there it is inside. It's kind of uh, pushed down, it snaps in that little um, molded plastic piece there. And underneath here, you have a couple of the, of course, the obligatory lock. You've got the uh, instructions for the lock here. You've got the instructions manual for the firearm. Comes with a couple stickers there, protected by S333. You got this sticker here, which uh, I don't know if I would want to put that sticker on anything. It's kind of a, uh, I don't know if it says the right thing. But anyways, let's take a look at the gun. All right, now what makes this such an innovative new gun? I mean, it's a revolver. It's kind of odd looking. It's got a really funky trigger on the thing but it's got two barrels on it. So what this does is it's called a volley fire. It fires two projectiles when you pull the trigger. You've got to have two fingers on it. You've got to depress the little uh, dongle there and you've got to pull back with equal pressure on both sides of it to get it to do what it does. You got your uh, cylinder release out there on the side. Just tip your cylinder out and you can see there's eight holes in there. So what this means is it's going to kind of index two at a time so it gives you four shots with eight projectiles. Now, 22 Magnum as a personal protection, personal protection round is probably not, you know, a lot of the people say, well, it's rim fire, so it's unreliable, and um, it's 22 Magnum, so it's not very powerful. But if you got the chance to fire two rounds in your target at the same time, chances of both of them misfiring are gonna be really slim. And uh, when they do hit, they're going to do some damage. 22 Magnum is not really a slouch. It's a good, uh, good, powerful round for a rimfire, and um, it's a, a pretty cool choice for a, a personal protection gun. Now you'll notice the trigger guard doesn't have anything on the bottom here, but accidentally discharging this one by sticking it in your pocket is going to be pretty slim because, like I said, you've got to depress the dongle on there and you've got to pull it back. And this thing has a seriously hefty trigger pull on it. I don't know what the weight is on there. And it's a rim fire, so I'm not going to dry fire it, but it's a pretty hefty trigger pull. Let's get this thing loaded up and then we'll get it, give a few shots at the target and see how it does. All right, I've got some CCI Maxi Mag 22 Winchester Magnum rim fires here. These are uh, 40, ja uh, 40 grain um, jacketed. Uh, I think they're just a round point. I don't believe they're a hollow point. No, just a uh, jacketed um, total, full metal jacket. Total metal jacket is what they call it. 1,875 feet per second. Now that is out of their test barrel, which is more than likely going to be a 16 inch barrel. But uh, this is a really short barrel on this thing. It is, I mean, what, an inch and something? It's not very long at all. But let's get eight rounds out of here and load this thing up and see how it does. Now to load it, it's just like pretty much any other revolver that's out there. You just tip your uh, cylinder out and drop your rounds in the chambers. And remember, you're loading eight rounds, but you only get four shots. Make sure they're all the way down in there. Now, one of the things, if you read through the manual, one of the things they'll say to check on this is uh, the recoil uh, causing the other rounds to dislodge the projectile. And what that means is when these things are in there and you shoot, that recoil pulls back like that. Well, the mass of the bullet is going to want to travel differently than the rest of it. This is pretty light. The shell itself is pretty light. The mass of the um, round is going to want to kind of resist that movement a little bit. So what it'll do is it can tend to back the projectile out of there a little bit. And that can cause a kind of a dangerous situation. So what they recommend in the owner's manual in here is to check and see if any of your rounds are suffering that issue. 
So they met, recommend loading the whole thing up and firing three shots, which would actually be six rounds, and then check your last two and see if they've dislodged any. We're gonna go ahead and give it, uh, we'll give it the three shots up here at the seven yard target and uh, check those last two rounds and see how they do. Okay, now not only is this thing known by the name S333, and if you go on their website how they get the name S33, this says that uh, uh, crime statistics show uh, a lot of encounters happen within three yards in three seconds, and usually three shots are involved. Check your own statistics if you want. I hear, I've heard a lot of different things, but this is also known as the Thunderstruck. I think that was an ACDC song. But anyways, they say it's pretty loud. I haven't fired it yet. I'm getting ready to do that right now. I'm gonna fire three rounds or three volleys at this target up here, and then we'll go up there and check, and we're gonna pull the ammo out and see if those rounds look like they've backed out any. All right, it's a long, heavy trigger pull on it, so let's give it a try. It's not too bad, it's kind of weird because you've seen I flinched on that first one because the trigger pull is real heavy and then there's a spot where it really lightens up but it hasn't fired yet and then that last little bit there is pow and it goes off. Uh, you can feel the recoil in your hand. Um, it's got a little bit of a hit to it there and I kind of wasn't sure where this thing's shooting at so let's go up there and look at the target real quick and, and see what happens. I see little holes all over the place on that thing. Okay, here's the target. I did put my little camera up there and luckily I didn't hit it, but you'll see holes here, there, 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 there. And one thing, let's see, two, four, six. Okay, there's six rounds there. One thing you'll notice about these holes is that's not, that one looks pretty round. That one's not round at all. That one's okay, that one's not, that one's not, that one looks okay. Looks like there might've been a little bit of bullet tumbling on there, but um, Let's check those last two bullets in there and see if they backed out any. Okay, to eject the rounds on here, just go ahead and push that button, tip your cylinder out. You've got your ejector rod right there. And looks like they hang up just a little bit. And here are the last two rounds that were in there. It does not appear to me that they've backed out at all, so they're held in there pretty tight. There's not much of a crimp on these, um, but there's enough there where it didn't back them out at all. Anyways, let's load up some more and give it a try. All right, we're gonna take a couple shots at the 15 yard target. I moved my little camera up there and like I said, it's, uh, there's a little bit of a spread. They don't hit right side by side. I mean, there's just a probably a, maybe three eighths of an inch between the two barrels. They didn't hit like that. They spread just a little bit farther apart. So hopefully I don't hit my little camera up there. Let's give it a try, see how it does. There's that long take up. and really long release on the trigger. It is definitely loud, I can tell you that. Even with these on, I can still hear it pretty good. Um, but there was eight shots, four pulls of the trigger, and eject the, uh, the uh, rounds out of there. And like I said, they can kind of want to hang up just a little bit, but um, they do make a speed loader for this too. If you go on Standard Manufacturing's website, they've got different holsters, Kydex holsters. They've got a holster that pretty much covers just the trigger guard on this thing. Um, but they have a speed loader available for this thing too. Let's go up there and take a look at that. It does not look like I did very well. It looks to me like it was hitting extremely high. But again, that's the 15 yard mark and they said, Three, 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 uh, three yards, three seconds, three shots. Um, so let's go ahead and try it or check it out and see what it looks like. Okay, all my shots were hitting up in here and I know this because I can see some freshly broken wood in a couple spots there. There's one that did hit the target. So uh, accuracy at 15 yards, once you figure out where it hits at, you probably do all right. But I could tell it was hitting high because I could see some of the weeds behind it falling down. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stick eight more rounds back in this thing, and I'm gonna to try to do four volleys uh, in kind of rapid succession there. Um, if you're gonna get one of these, I would really suggest getting out and doing some practicing with it because the trigger pull is 
to me it's weird. Of course the gun's pretty weird in itself, but uh, the trigger pull is definitely weird. It's something that's going to take getting used to, especially if you're used to firing you know, other revolvers or semi-autos. Uh, this one is weird. There's that long, heavy pull and then it lightens up and comes back real far. And then there's a little bit more for it to fire. Uh, it's not a bad trigger pull and it is part of the safety on this thing, but it's kind of weird to get used to. And with the two fingers on there, you've got two fingers and your thumb is holding it and the other two fingers are doing your trigger pull. So it is kind of weird, but it's neat. So let's go ahead and see if we can do four kind of rapid fire ones and see how it does. It's still going to take some getting used to for me anyways. It's not terrible. Um, uh, quick pulls like that aren't bad. It's that uh, if you're trying to do the accuracy shot, it's, it's weird. Okay, to open this thing up, push the little button on the side, tip the cylinder out. You got your ejector rod there. Now your ejector rod on this thing is really short and your cases on a 22 Magnum. All right, what's going on here? Had a sticky one in there. Anyways, your cases on the 22 Magnum are pretty long, quite a bit longer than that little short ejector rod on there, which means that it's not gonna tip them all the way out. Of course, they, you know, some of them will fall out, some of them you'll have to pull out. Um, you really can't put much longer ejection rod on this thing because, I mean, there's the end of the ejection rod right there, there's the end of the barrel, so you're not gonna get one that's gonna be able to shove it all the way back there. Um, but it's a cool little gun. As far as maintenance on this thing, I mean, really the only thing to do to it is tip your cylinder out, get you a brush and clean up inside there, spray it down with a little ram oil or whatever your favorite cleaner is and, uh, you know, shine it up pretty good. Get a little oil in the spots where they, uh, rotate, uh, clean up the face inside there. I don't know if I can show you that, clean that up a little bit. Um, clean your barrels out. The barrels are super short on this thing. So, uh, Cleaning them up ought to be a breeze. And uh, really, there's not much more to do to it. It's a good-looking little gun. It's made out of a, uh, an alloy, an aluminum alloy, hardened aluminum alloy on the frame. Uh, the barrels and the cylinder are made out of an alloy of steel. I'm not sure what the alloy is, but it's a pretty tough uh, uh, tool steel, I would imagine. Uh, got a plastic or a rubber grip on it that's not too bad in the hand. It's pretty comfortable. Um, it's your support hand is kind of odd to find a place to put it because I don't know, there's not much. And you can see, I got my finger smoked up there a little bit from having it on the front of the trigger guard there. You get gases that come out of that cylinder gap right there. And really the cylinder gap on this thing is pretty small. I don't know if you'll be able to see any of that, but, um, it's, it's not a very big gap in there at all. Um, but it's a pretty cool little gun. The lockup's pretty tight on it. The trigger pull is the only thing that's funky, but it's there for a reason. It's a safety feature on this thing. And like I say, if you put this in your pocket, the chance of you getting that hung up on something and, uh, you know, causing an accidental discharge is going to be pretty slim. You're going to realize something's wrong when you go to put it in your pocket and you've got that much resistance on it. And if you don't pull that little dongle back on there, it's not coming back anyways. And you do need two fingers on this thing to pull it back because one finger up there, you just, that takes a tremendous amount of pull to get that. Your second finger gives you a little more leverage, makes it a lot easier to pull. Pretty cool little gun, uh, very short barrel on it. Accuracy is not gonna be its forte, but it's not made for any long distance stuff. This is a belly gun. This is an up close and personal protection gun. And I think it'll really do a great job should you need it. Um, 22 Magnum is not really a slouch. It's a pretty good round, even though it doesn't get as much velocity out of this little short barrel because those gases, that bullet's out, there's still a lot of gases to be uh, pushing, but there's nothing to push on because that bullet's already out of the end of the barrel. All right, guys, there it is, the Thunderstruck, the S333 from Standard Manufacturing. It's a neat little revolver that volley fires two rounds at a time. A funky trigger pull on it, but it's a pretty compact little gun. And um, although, I mean, it could be a pocket gun, you need a pretty big pocket to put that in. The grip is actually pretty big on it. The rest of it's pretty small. Cool little choice, a very, uh, you know, odd or innovative. Um, just a neat little pistol, neat little revolver. Anyways, thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review. If you could 
Hit this button up here to check out some of my other videos. Hit this button over here to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for taking a look at the Thunderstruck with me. Thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.